Glory to God. We are here to worship the Lord and to receive from Him through both word and sacrament here at Faith Anglican Church. As we gather together, let us sing Lion and the Lamb.
How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. Let us stand to sing how firm a foundation. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. That we, perfect, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. The Lord be with you. And with your 
Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Now at Lystra there was a man sitting who could not use his feet. He was crippled from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking. And Paul, looking intently at him and seeing that he had faith to be made well, said in a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. And he sprang up and began walking and when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in Lyconium, The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance to the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates and wanted to offer sacrifice with the crowds. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their garments and rushed out into the crowd crying out, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men of like nature with you and we bring you good news that you may turn from these vain things to a living God who made heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations he allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways, yet he did not leave himself without witness, for he did good by giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. Even with these words, they scarcely restrained the people from offering sacrifices to them. The word of the Lord. It says Psalm 145, and here it says something else. I'm going to read Psalm 67. Um, it, it's a psalm that needs to be read with some enthusiasm. Go for it. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, that all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. O oh God, our God shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him, and we will come to make uh, to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place. So when it does take place, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. You may be seated. Well, let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for the time to worship you in song this morning. And we thank you that you have graciously spoken to us through your word. And we pray, Lord, that you would open the ears of our hearts to receive the seed of the word planted in our souls, that it may grow and, and bring fruit in our lives. And we ask this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Well, last uh, June, uh, almost a year ago, I found a lump under my jaw, right up in here. I don't know how long it had been there, but I decided it would be a good idea to go to my ENT. So I went to my ENT, he examined the lump and said, gosh, we need to get a CT scan on this. So they did the CT scan and the, 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 the CT can, scan came back and said the lump was fine, it was just, it was just something, don't worry about it. However, you have this big growth uh, in your thyroid. And so they decided to do a biopsy. And I asked my brother, who's a physician, about it too. And he said, yeah, you need to get a biopsy. So they did this needle biopsy, went in there, and they pulled out material, and it looked suspicious. So I ended up having thyroid surgery in September of last year. And praise be to God, it came out. Uh, with no cancer. It had not turned into cancer yet. They got it in time. However, uh, as many of you know, uh, the nerve that goes through the thyroid goes to your vocal cords. And I couldn't speak. The kids called me Father Vader because I sounded like oh, Darth Vader. <laughs> and I, I, I just I couldn't speak well enough to share God's word. Uh, my surgeon said that the voice might come back within six months, maybe 12 months, but it might not. So I could do administrative things, but I couldn't preach or teach or talk with people, which were basically the most important part of my ministry and my livelihood. And since I was partially disabled, uh, I was on disability uh, insurance. So I was receiving a disability check and from the the funds that the church saved, we were able to bring in a great array of priests and deacons to share God's word and to celebrate the sacraments. Um, it was a scary time, uh, both for me and for the church. I mean, what if my voice never came back? Or what if it came back a little bit, but not enough where I could really function as a proclaimer of God's word? 
Uh, what would the church do? You know, would the church need to search for a new rector? Uh, what would I do, you know, to find a way of making a living? You know, there were a lot of what ifs, you know, there were a lot of unknowns and uncertainties. And of course, we prayed for healing. We prayed for God to supernaturally intervene. And we prayed for my voice to recover so I could continue to proclaim the word of God. So I had the prayer team in the prayer corner here praying for me every Sunday. And they prayed, they persevered in prayer, and it appeared that nothing had changed. So in the midst of this inner turmoil and times of fear, God graciously brought me to a place of trust in Him, where I could rest in His faithfulness, not worrying about my healing or my provision, trusting that God was raising up others to pray for me. I didn't have to do it alone. Over and over again, the Lord brought to mind Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What a funny thing. I shall not want. I wanted to be healed. The Lord brought me into this place of peace where I didn't have to want to be healed. I didn't have this desperate, fearful need for my voice, from this desperate, uh, fearful want for my voice to come back. So God gave me the grace to simply rest in Him, that the Lord really is my shepherd, that I didn't have to want anything, that God would provide one way or another. So I was in this place of peace in the midst of the storm of extreme uncertainty. And that's just how God is. And in the midst of these storms of life, if we turn to Him, He brings us to a place of peace. So last November, uh, my voice was, had still not returned at all. And I went to our diocesan synod meeting, which is uh, near Atlanta, on the other side of Atlanta, Loganville, Georgia. But I decided to go a day early and just uh, walk and pray uh, on uh, Ruffner Mountain, which is north of Birmingham. And I just spent that time just in, in solitude, in, in the presence of the Lord, praying. The following day, I went to Loganville, uh, to our uh, cathedral. And I went to our diocesan sit in meeting. And part of that meeting, we broke into our smaller groups called deaneries. We have 11 of those. And uh, in the deanery a meeting, they heard me talk and they said, can we pray for you? I said, yes, please. So they prayed for me, they laid hands on me, they anointed me with oil, and, um, and, and uh, they, they prayed and, and didn't appear that anything had happened. Next morning I woke up and my voice had improved by 75%. Glory to God. So we persevered in prayer. In the prayer corner. You all persevered in prayer with me. And, and uh, the clergy who had already been praying for me persevered in prayer. It appeared that nothing was happening. And yet the next morning, my voice was 75%. Glory to God. Within three weeks, the voice was back to normal. So praise the Lord. Persevere in prayer. At times, Jesus' prayers did not manifest instantaneously. We typically think of Jesus because He is God, and He was God. He's always been God. We t tend to think that when He prays, things immediately happen, and they usually did. But in Mark chapter 8, He came to Beth Bethsaida, and some of the people brought a blind man to Jesus and begged for Him to touch him, that He might heal him. And Jesus spit on his eyes and laid hands on him. I've not tried that one yet. <laughs> but that's what Jesus did. He spit on his eyes, making sort of an anointing oil of spit. He laid hands on him. Then Jesus said, do you see anything? And the man said, but he, he looked up and he said, he said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. So God had done a partial healing. Praise the Lord. I mean, he probably would have been happy just to have had a 
partial healing. But Jesus persevered in prayer. He laid hands on him again and he prayed for him and boom, he opened his eyes and his sight returned and he was seeing everything clearly. So Jesus is and was and always has been the Son of God and he persevered in prayer. And if he had to persevere in prayer, don't you think maybe we should too? For me, it was 15 weeks persevering in prayer. For you, it was 15 weeks persevering in prayer with me. And I think that's a lesson for us to remember. Continue in prayer. Now, throughout the Gospels and the book of Acts, we see prayer ministry as an integral part of the Gospel and as an integral part of the ministry of God's people. Acts 10.38 reminds us how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So Jesus healed the blind, the lame, the bleeding, the demonically oppressed. And throughout the book of Acts, we see much the same. Sometimes healing came through the laying on of hands. Sometimes through the anointing of oil. Sometimes through verbal commands. Sometimes through things that would seem strange to us, like spitting or making mud out of spittle and putting it on somebody. Or, or as we see in Acts chapter 19, where handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched Paul's skin were carried to the sick and their diseases left them and evil spirits came out of them. That, that seems a little strange to us, doesn't it? And yet God used these different ways to bring about healing. In Acts chapter 3, Peter and John were entering the temple in Jerusalem through the gate called the Beautiful Gate. And a man who had been lame from birth lay there at the gate seeking alms from people that came in. When we were in Honduras uh, serving as missionaries, I remember there was a man they would bring out in a cart every day, and he, and he, would, he couldn't move at all, and there was a little jar for money in his cart, and you would simply drop it in. And I guess they would trust no one would steal out of that little jar. But this is much the same. This has been the same all throughout the world before anything like, you know, social uh, nets came about through governments. So he was there trusting that God would pro provide through people. And inspired by the Holy Spirit, when, when Peter, Peter and John came by, Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk! And he did. <laughs> and he was running and leaping and praising God all throughout the temple. So here, this lame man was healed through a spirit-inspired command. They didn't lay hands on him. They didn't anoint him with all. They didn't even pray. They commanded him to rise up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That was Acts chapter 3. In Acts chapter 9, Saul was blinded by Jesus. Because if you remember, Saul was persecuting Christians before his conversion. And he was murdering Christians. So Jesus blinded him on the road to Damascus. And then Jesus told a lay person to go, by the name of Ananias, to go and pray for Paul. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul... The Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me to you that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. So here Saul was healed by, through the laying on of hands, a spirit-inspired laying on of hands. Now in today's reading from Acts chapter 14, Paul and Barnabas arrived in Lystra 
in what today would be southern Turkey. Now, if you were here last Sunday, you remember Bishop Frank had a map on the wall. And he walked over here and he talked about Turkey being like a banana split with the two pieces of banana on the top and the three hunks of ice cream. And so Lystra would be sort of between the first and the second uh, lumps of ice cream in a banana split. If you weren't here last week, you're probably wondering, what is wrong with that preacher? <laughs> but I thought it was worth the risk. It's a little fun. So in Lystra, there was a man who had been crippled in his feet from birth. He had never walked, never had physical therapy. Anybody ever been into physical therapy? Okay, you know. So I could, I've been doing 10 or 12 weeks of physical therapy since my shoulder surgery. And, you know, it just takes forever, right? Well, this man had never walked, never had any physical therapy, okay? And as he listened to Paul, he was intently listening to Paul as he was talking about Jesus. And, and, and Paul looked intently at this man and seeing that he had faith to be made well, said in a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. And he sprang up, can you imagine? Sprang up and started walking. Wow. So here Paul saw that he had faith to be healed. So I'm wondering, what does that look like? I mean, how did he see it? Did God give him a vision and he just saw? Or, or did God give him a, a prophetic word of knowledge that he had the faith to be healed? Well, we don't know, but we know that Paul saw it and that he knew that he had faith to be healed. So he issued that command, stand upright on your feet. And the man sprang up, glory to God. So how did the people respond to this? Did they say glory to God? Did they say praise the Lord? How did they respond? Inappropriately. <laughs> Wrong! They responded much like sometimes people do with healing ministries today. Acts 14, 11 and following says, When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices in the Lyconian uh, language. The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. And Paul's, you know, Paul's saying, No, you missed the point. Barnabas they called Zeus and Paul... Hermes because he was the chief speaker and the priest of Zeus whose temple was at the entrance to the city can you imagine this he's bringing oxen in there's these these big animals coming down okay let's get out the knife let's bring the fire let's sacrifice the animals to to Zeus and Hermes I mean Paul and and Barnabas and Paul's like no so what should happen to us today if we pray for someone and God miraculously intervenes to make sure that the praise goes to God and not to us, or that we don't become big-headed and think, wow, I really have quite a ministry here. Now, this is normal Christian ministry, healing ministry. So listen to what Paul did. When he, the apostles, Paul and Barnabas, heard of it, they tore their garments. They probably put dust on their head. Like, no, no. You know, they made a big outcry. This is wrong. I said, why are you doing these things? You know, we also are men of like nature to you, and we bring you good news that you should turn away from these vain things, like sacrificing to Zeus. In past generations, he allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways, yet he did not leave them without witness, for he did good by giving them rains in heaven and fruitful season, satisfying your hearts with good and gladness. Even with these words, he barely stopped them from offering sacrifices to them. So healing is an integral part of the gospel. Healing ministry is an integral part of the ministry of the church. But when our focus slips off of the heavenly healer and onto the fantastical, the oratory skills of the minister, the wonderful accompanying emotions that, that come along with that, then we're in trouble. Trouble. 
When you see God's gift of healing, make sure your eyes stay on Him. Make sure you give glory to God and not to His ministers. In the song, Let the Weight of Your Glory Fall, we sing, We do not seek your hand, we only seek your face. For when we seek God's face in the midst of all the concerns and prayers that we bring to Him, instead of just the reward, we keep our eyes on Him, only on His face. Then when those blessings come, we don't forget Him and walk off and say, Hey, I got my goodie. We keep our eyes on Him and giving Him the glory and honor. In the days of ocean liners and kerosene lamps, there was a Polish man who wanted to come to America. Couldn't speak English. He only, he only spoke Polish. He was an uneducated laborer, and um, yet over a period of years, he was able to save his pennies. He was able to save his pennies, and finally he had enough to buy a steamship ticket to go to America. He was so excited. Uh, he, he said his goodbyes to his village, hugs and tears, and then he went to the port uh, where he had we boarded this ship to go to the land of opportunity, to the great port of New York City. He found a comfortable chair on the top deck. He had never been on something so high. The views were just amazing and they were going across the ocean. He had his old duffel bag that he had in his lap and he pulled out food and, and snacks and things and, and he was just so glad to be able to go to America. The other passengers wined and dined in their beautiful accommodations and their beautiful meals, uh, but he didn't mind. He was just so glad that he had a ticket to America. Near the end of the voyage, one of the, uh, one of the uh, crew who spoke Polish came up to him and asked him, why, why do you sit out here in the weather? And why, why do you eat from your, your duffel bag here instead of going down and enjoying the meals? And he said, oh, I'm just a poor laborer. All I could afford was the ticket. I couldn't afford the, the, the meals or, the, or the, the nice beds and all that. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm just happy heading to America. And then the crew member said, and shook his head, he said, but sir, the room and the food was included in the price of the ticket. It's part of the deal. See, the ship is like God's church, full of God's blessings, full of God's blessings that he so longs to give us. The Polish immigrant is like the people of God who read the Bible but don't actually believe it. Healing prayer is an integral part of the gospel and the ministry of the church. So let us persevere in prayer, not only for ourselves but for one another, that we may give God the glory and honor and praise, and we may receive the benefits that he so longs to give us. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that you are real. That you are beyond the realm of this world. That you are supernatural. Lord, help us to keep our eyes fixed on you, the author and perfecter of our faith. And Lord, help us to extend your grace of healing to others. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Standing together, let us confess our faith in the words that I see. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty. Amen.
peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the holy church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming, and preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. The leaders of the church, for Foley, our Archbishop, and Frank, our assisting bishop, for our pastors and all pastors, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For those who do not yet believe, and those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For peace and a spirit of respect and forbearance to dwell among nations and peoples. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For those in positions of public trust, especially for Job, our president, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For a blessing upon all human labor, and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be free from poverty, famine, and disaster. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For the poor, the persecuted, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For our families, friends, and neighbors, that being free from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For Mansell, Nancy, Bill, John, Jamie Beth, Jonathan, Eli, Early Grace, Joyce, Father Frank, and Jimmy Myers, Edith, Lang Lois, and Carol. We pray to you, O Lord. For all who have died in the communion of your church, strengthened by their witness, you may be grateful for their example. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray, we pray for the people and clergy of St. Andrews, Versailles of uh, Kentucky, asking you, Lord, to bless and strengthen their ministry and fellowship to the good witnesses for Jesus Christ. Yours is the majesty, O God, holy and eternal, Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Join me in the prayer for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, May bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen.
O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the midst of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help, for you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now let us confess our sins to God Almighty, uh, kneeling if able. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Let's stand and greet one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
here. We got them a handmade um, chalice and pattern and bags for them to go in. And the basket, which I found at IKEA, is from India. They served as missionaries in India. And so it's, it's all of them, like he says, uh, as it turns out, I have been asked to celebrate the Eucharist for the Trinity staff next week at our annual retreat. So the set will be baptized almost immediately. You remain in our thoughts, our prayers, and our very lives each day. We are so thankful for all of you. Blessings, Brad and Gretchen. Okay, we have our last um, Awana for the academic year. It'll be tonight. There'll be some reward, uh, award, not rewards, awards, award night. And if it's not raining too much, uh, they've asked me to build a fire. There you go. Padre, uh, Pyro Padre. Um, Chesterton, would you come up here for a minute? Okay, there you go. There he comes. Uh, Chesterton uh, helped teach our confirmation class. And we were going to uh, officially, you can stay down there because it makes me look bigger. <laughs> I've been on the first step where now we're even. So. <laughs> Um, but Chesterton went through our membership class back in January or December or something. I can't remember. It's a long time yeah, ago. January. The January. And so uh, we never had, the, we were just going to have him become a member during confirmation, but he had to be at a wedding in Chicago. So we are officially receiving him as a member of the church today. So we are so excited. <laughs> Okay, and do you have a VBS announcement? Or you have an announcement, right? Okay, thanks. Right. Okay, did you want to make your announcement now? Okay. Okay. Well, I have two announcements. The first one's, I think everybody knew that we, um, well, the kids, Adawana and the kids for church for our Faith in Action event. Um, filled Easter eggs for Dorothy Dayhouse, and um, they just sent us a nice letter thanking the congregation. We sent 300 Easter eggs for them, um, and they were just saying, may our congregation be blessed for our generosity, and um, we're going to partner with them probably some more, so look forward to those announcements in the next month or so. So I just wanted to let you guys know and thank you for that for the Easter eggs for those kids. And then today, after church, we're going to have like a quick VBS meeting, I guess you could say. So um, even if you can't or unable to volunteer, um, there's so many things that you can do to help us. Out on that table in the narthex, I have a VBS calendar. And it says it's for like the month leading up to VBS. But really, we should pray now, cover our kids, our leaders, everybody, and just let God be glorified through our VBS that's coming up. Or if we share things on Facebook, or um, I have these out on the table too, they're little invitations um, that you can pass to your neighbors or your nieces or nephews or whoever, and just share it and get the word out about our VBS. Um, and that's all. So thank you, guys. That's great. And this is just a fantastic uh, evangelistic opportunity and disciple-making opportunity. And so I uh, really encourage you to be involved in one way or another in this. This is, this is our moment to, to help uh, either our kids or the neighbor that doesn't go to church that can come along with one of our kids and, you know, or grandchildren and where God can meet them in the middle of this. And did you see this cool shirt she's got? Yes. It says... Zoomerang. And then here's the back. Yeah, Australia. This is an Aussie, uh, an Aussie VBS this year. Yeah, and I should be catching up, but we're going to have a fair dunking time, which is good, I guess, in Australia. I don't know how to, like, say, how to say good day, mate, and all that, but I've been looking at it. I think I play it out in my head, but um, the VBS, too, I guess I should have mentioned that, is about... Um, returning to the value of life. Yeah, 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 great. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right. All right. And drum roll. Any drummers in here? Jake?
Hey, come on up. I forgot you were a drummer. Just this moment. Jake has graduated from uh, Houston High School. No. We're very proud of you and, and looking forward to hearing what all God has in your future. You're going to be going to Old Miss, right? Okay, awesome. So uh, that's his plan for the fall. And uh, let's just uh, give thanks to God and, and uh, have a prayer for him. Yeah. Heavenly Father, thank you for your servant Jake and just for all you brought him through in life and, and uh, you know, this great milestone, uh, graduating from high school. And we pray, Lord, that you would not only bless his summer, but uh, bless his, uh, his um, college education and that you, Lord, would weave into all his plans, your plans that you have for him. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We do have one other graduate, so I thought we'd ask Leander to come up. She just graduated with her master's. <laughs> Master of Arts in Christian Spiritual Formation and Leadership at Friends University. So we are, you know, we're so excited for you. So Lord, we ask your blessing, Lord, for this, uh, all this hard work and joyful work that she's done. And uh, Lord, we just pray that you would use this powerfully in her life and in her ministry. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right. All right. Let's see. Do we have any other announcements? There's Janie. Come on up. What do you have to tell us? Wonderful news from uh, that uh, y'all helped so much this year that we made over nine hundred dollars more than we ever made in the past. Two thousand six hundred thirty-nine dollars and seven cents. Now we got the dollars to the world with y'all done. Thank you so much. All right, and for those of you that have no idea what we raised money for. It's okay. It's okay. You know, it's good to laugh, right? Uh, we raised this. For, it was the, the 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 baby bottles for life, for Life Choices of Memphis. It's a ministry that assists women that find themselves pregnant and weren't planning to be, and helps them not only um, with ultrasounds to show them the baby, but helps them so many years later as well, and also the fathers if they're involved. So it's a wonderful Christian ministry, and it's a positive uh, life ministry as well. So I'm so excited. We raised how much more than last year? $900. 900 more. 27 something. Wow. That's fantastic. Okay. Y'all clap a lot this morning. <laughs> are your hands tired? Let's give a clap offering to the Lord. Glory to God. Well, if you are a baptized Christian, you are welcome to come to the Lord's table. We'll be receiving Holy Communion this morning. And uh, so if you're a baptized Christian, we'd love for you to come and to receive Christ's body and blood. But as ascribed to the Lord, be honored to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's try that again. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty, and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who is offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world who by his death has destroyed death by his rising to life again, has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he might dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day.
Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith. With thanksgiving.
Okay, we've been fed by the Word of God. We've been fed by His body and blood. And we've, uh, we're ready to go, aren't we? Ready to go out into the world, make a difference, to be the light of Christ in the world? Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. All of our problems, we send to the cross of Christ. All of our difficulties, we send to the cross of Christ. All the devil's works, we send to the cross of Christ. All our hopes, we set on the risen Christ. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.